Now, one of the things on my fly tying bucket list is to tie every winged wet fly from Ray Bergman's 1938 trout. And then I counted them and realized I might not live that long. Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by. So while I might not be able to tie every fly in this book, I'm gonna start with a few of them because there's some really beautiful patterns. He's got about nine plates of just winged wet flies, maybe 40 or 50 flies on each one. So there's about 400 flies in it. Some of them are hard, some of them are pretty simple looking, but there's some really cool, beautiful patterns in here. And the one I picked to do today, it's called the Flamer. Now, I picked it because it looks really cool, but it's still a fairly simple pattern to tie. And while there are some really complicated patterns in here that ultimately I do want to tie, they're probably not the ones that I want to spend 20 or 30 minutes on each fly to fill up a fly box that, you know, I'm going to go lose it in the trees anyway. But a simple pattern like today's, it's not going to take you that long to tie, and you know the thing's going to catch fish. Now, I couldn't find any history on this. Bergman doesn't really go into the history in this book. I mean, there's just not enough space to talk about the hundreds of flies in here. And I couldn't really find anything online. This pattern did not show up in Mary Orvis Marbury's favorite flies. So the best I could guess, it's probably from, you know, sometime in the turn of the century up through the 20s. So it's probably a hundred year old pattern. But again, it's a really cool looking fly. I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there it is in the vise the old school winged wet fly called the Flamer from Ray Bergman's 1938 Trout. Now the book doesn't say what size any of these wet flies should be, uh, so tie them in whatever size you would fish. This is a size 10, so 1x long standard wet fly hook, and I'm gonna put down a base of black thread to the start of the bend. All right, I think that's gonna work. Now, one of the things I really like about this book, it doesn't tell you exactly what materials to use. I mean, that could be a con too. For the tail, it'll just say red. But it does look like a duck or goose slip. So since it's a size 10, I'm gonna use a duck and I'm gonna use red. It's a pretty long tail. It's not insignificant. So just one slip of a dyed red duck wing. And I'm gonna try to catch this right on top, almost like you were doing the front wing. I don't really want it to start laying flat on me. Okay, I think that's gonna be just fine right there. And I'm gonna do a couple wraps to lock it in. And you know what, I could snip that off, but I don't think, you know what, I am going to. Because we don't have a real big butt on this guy. And we do have a flat silver tinsel for a body. So I'm gonna to try to minimize my thread wraps to not create a big lump underneath it. But the next thing we're gonna tie in is some black chenille for a butt. And this is a small. I don't think you could really get away with a medium on this, this size of a fly. Maybe if you were tying it in a size six or bigger, a, a salmon fly or steelhead fly, yeah, you could probably go with a bigger chenille. But for the small trout sizes, you might really need this thin chenille. Okay. I got a few fibers right here. I'm gonna go ahead and try and snip those again. Trying to keep my thread wraps to a minimum before we get to this body. Okay, I missed one right there. Let's make sure we can get that. Or, yeah, close enough. All right, now how big a butt do you want on it? Oh, everybody likes a big old butt, right? Maybe two wraps, maybe two wide and put one on top of the other one if you want a big one. I keep saying that, big butt. I'm not doing that on purpose, um, but okay. Two wraps, and I didn't put any on top of each other, but I think that's gonna be the, a good enough width right there. Let's go ahead and snip this off. Now, here's a little tip Pete told me last time I did a, a silver flat tinsel body. He said catch it in up at the front and yeah this is a, a good tip. It will probably help you uh, eliminate a lump back here. It might not be perfect but it will help a little bit I think. Okay so I'm going to catch this up here silver side toward the hook and kind of on my side and I'm going to do some big open wraps going back right here to where I'm going to start wrapping this body. 
So let's go one more back. I think that's gonna work. Now more open wraps just to get my thread back up here to where I'm gonna catch off this body. Now our, our tail still looks fine. Our black chenille butt looks fine. Now let's wrap this, this flat silver tinsel body. And my goal here is to not have any overlapping wraps, but also at the same time, not leave any uh, gap showing in between each wrap. So I just kind of, you know, take my time here and wrap it up and hope for the best. And we'll see how it turns out. Okay, after you get up to the front, go ahead and catch this off with a couple of tight wraps. Now we can snip this tinsel. And that body turned out okay. It's not perfect, but I think it's it's flat enough and I don't see any big obvious gaps. So I'm gonna do another wrap right here. Let's do two, just to really lock that in. Now the next component on this guy, it's a throat. And the pattern book doesn't say what, it just says brown. Picture of it looks like brown hen or rooster. This is a rooster, but it's a softer feather, so it might as well be a hen. And I'm gonna take probably 15 or so fibers. It's not a big throat. And the length of it, I think we're gonna make it to, oh, maybe the point of the hook, but maybe just a little bit shy. So let's try this right here and see what we got. Pinch wrap right there and one more, and let's take a look at it. Okay, I think that throat is gonna be just fine. Make sure it's coming off the bottom like I want. And one more wrap to lock it. Now we can snip this excess right here. Okay, now it's laying a little bit close to the body, so I'm gonna yank it down a little bit without pulling it out. And what I could do, I could put a thread wrap behind it to really prop it down, but I think that would, uh, that would be a little too much. So let's live with what we have right here. Now I'm gonna leave my thread right at the, at the back of where I want my head to be. Next thing I'm gonna tie in is the, the duck slips for the wing. Now here's a tip. This is probably the hardest part of the fly, um, but I'll put the size hook I'm using in some spring loader tackle pliers and then just hold it right up here and then slide it through. And that is a good gauge of how thick of a piece you want. Now that might make it just a slight bit too thick. So you might end up taking just a couple more fibers off, but after you've got it, so you've got a nice little slip right there and these tips aren't lined up. So let me try to fix that. Okay, they're a little bit more lined up right there. And my thread is hanging at the back of where I want my head to be. So I've got these in my non-material hand right now. I'm gonna measure the length, probably to about the, the hook bend. And what I'll do with my material hand, I will grab the feathers and the hook. Now I'm pinching them fairly tight right here. And I'm gonna put a, a pinch wrap through, but I haven't pulled it tight yet. I'm gonna come back up on this side and pull it up from here. Kind of move my fingers forward as I catch it in. Now we'll take a look at it. So I've got two wraps on. They're not real tight yet. So let's let's judge our position. And I'm gonna have to take the thread back a little bit because you see there's some black thread underneath it. Um, but you know what? I'm gonna back it off and do that again because I want you know that first wrap to be farther back. Okay, so let's try this. And you might have heard me say this before, you get about two, maybe three attempts at this before you mangle up these wings too much to, to really use. So if you mess it, if you don't get it right after probably two tries, you might just have to cut a new piece and start over. But I think we're gonna be able to work with this one. So I've got two wraps on right now and I'm gonna take a couple wraps going forward and these can be tighter. Okay, so how's that wing look? Okay, it's it's pretty much in the plane of the hook, so I'm fine with it. It's not the most perfect piece of duck slip right there. Um, if I was tying this as a presentation fly, I would probably be tying it on a bigger hook, and I would spend a little bit more time picking the, the perfect duck slip feathers. But I'm tying this to fish. 
So it's not gonna be a perfect presentation fly. Now let's just cut this off as close as you can get it. And if you have a singeing tool, now would be a good time to use it. Just kind of singe these butt ends right there. Or you can take a lighter to it, but I don't usually have a whole lot of luck when I'm doing that. I end up messing up the rest of the fly. Now, I've got a little, see that little piece of thread hanging off right there? That might make a mess on this head, which is kind of a bummer, but we'll see if we can live with it. So take your thread right back to the eye and then just ramp it back up and build the size head you want. Need to spin this just a little bit tighter. Don't want it quartered up too much, but tight enough to get a decent whip finish. So let's take out our whip finish tool and put one on here and see if we have any cleanup. I'm using head cement on this, so I think three or four turns will certainly be fine. And I've got a little bit of fuzz right there, but we're gonna be able to take care of that or just bury it with some UV resin. Okay, snip that off, any cleanup. Uh, yeah, we got a couple of fibers sticking off right here. I'm either gonna just try to get rid of those before I put my head cement or not worry about it. But there you go. It's not really that hard of a pattern. It's, you know, it is a winged wet fly, so it's not always the easiest to get that wing right. But that's it, folks. Drop a head cement and this is going in my box. Now, I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.